With the Link's Awakening remaster recently being announced, I started thinking about The Legend of Zelda and how unique the art styles are for so many different games. The Legend of Zelda is probably my favorite video game series of all time. Each game not only feels like a whole new adventure, but it's the world and the exploration that these games always manage to get me into. And so after seeing the new art style that Link's Awakening takes on, I want to talk about how each art style captures exactly what specific game wants you to feel. So yeah, let's talk about some Zelda games. But before we get all into it, uh, let's take a look at the original Legend of Zelda. Now obviously because of hardware limitations at the time, the Zelda art style is relatively like all retro game art styles, being pixely 8-bit things. But the original Legend of Zelda made a choice that would shape the entire series. And that was the top-down view. The top-down view was the deciding factor that would have the focus on exploration and adventure. Right now, these retro games are focusing on functionality first, which is most important. But while the Legend of Zelda series developed, the art direction and style for each game would take on new forms. And with that functionality, it was the top-down view that would set the groundwork for Zelda. But then we got Zelda 2. Now Zelda 2 instead went with a side-scrolling action, which although was totally different from the first game, wasn't a bad thing. The game instead focused more on combat, making it more engaging and helped develop the Zelda series. Zelda 2 really amped up the action in the series, it made you feel closer to Link and more connected with the world and the adventure that he was wrapped up in. But with future titles, like Link to the Past, we see the good old top-down view again, and this time we actually see more than like two colors on screen. The Legend of Zelda world has become more vibrant than ever, and it's just good old Zelda fun. But while the game industry was evolving, so was the Legend of Zelda. And finally, we've come to the 3D era. With more and more games transitioning to 3D graphics, the Zelda series did the same with Ocarina of Time. The 3D leap was a huge one for the Zelda series because with 3D, it was the beginning of a full visualization of what the Zelda series could be. The Ocarina of Time made Hyrule feel vast with this big field and exciting adventure. And with this, we're finally getting closer to the video games being able to be more stylized and artistic. Ocarina of Time established the formula that many 3D Zeldas would follow, but Ocarina of Time on its own had the ambition to create an amazing fantasy world. Zelda was really beginning to feel like a fantasy adventure led by a young boy elf in a green tunic, and although Majora's Mask was built on the same engine with the same assets and the same system, it was the exact opposite. Majora's Mask was driven by a sense of chaos almost. The dark and weird twist was really shown throughout Majora's Mask and it really set itself apart from Ocarina of Time. The game's creepy vibes, disturbing faces, and sense of dread among the world creates a totally different experience than what Ocarina of Time was, all with the moon giving a terrifying face coming down to crush you. This in a way reflects Majora's Mask's development time, which was tight to say the least. So many things from Ocarina of Time were reused solely to save development time, and for whatever reason, Anuma, the producer of the Zelda series, seemed to never be too proud of this game. Majora's Mask is sure an oddball for the Zelda series, but I think that's why so many people liked it. Its weird and twisted nature interested many players, and although not for everyone, it showed how different of an aesthetic direction can change a game. <laughs> and Wind Waker was definitely an aesthetic change for many. Now, personally, I love the Wind Waker style, and this is finally the era of full freedom for artistic direction and unique art styles. Wind Waker has such an enjoyable personality and a fun cartoony vibe to it. This with its cel shaded graphics made an adorable and charming game that still looks amazing given how old it is. An art style for a game generally should instantly give you an idea of what type of game it is, and with Wind Waker they tried something new that over time would become a fan favorite among many. Wind Waker's style is so instantly recognizable and it's a total gem. Everything about this game shows charm, the expression on the characters, the adventure sees, and the unique approach to its enemy designs. It's all tied to the core art direction of trying a new style for the Zelda series, and that's something to be appreciated. And the series feels like something completely different when we take a look at something like Twilight Princess. Its general art style right away feels like it's a more serious and gritty take on the Legend of Zelda series, which is exactly what it was. A deep story and the new Wolf Link concept brought a whole lot of attention towards the game, but it was the art direction that got people's first interests. Since Wind Waker's 2D art direction threw off a lot of Zelda fans originally, people were really wanting a more realistic Zelda game. Twilight Princess has a unique edge to the series, and its art style perfectly reflects that. And the amazing thing about the Legend of Zelda series is how it can get so many fans into different styles that they never would have played otherwise. A big Twilight Princess fan who may have not originally thought Wind Waker would have been their style, but because of its a Zelda game, it gives the player a chance to appreciate the uniqueness of each game independently. Twilight Princess's generally darker color palette displayed that this was a more realistic Zelda game, but still a Zelda game. It's stylized in its own unique way that makes it properly feel like what a Zelda game is, regardless how different it was from something like Wind Waker. And then eventually the series made a natural progression towards Skyward Sword's art style. 
Skyward Sword has a great charm to it, and having a bit of blend of Wind Waker's fun personality and Twilight Princess's character design, the visuals are much brighter than Twilight Princess and were brought into a whole new world. The bright blue sky and unique characters give a sense of a fun adventure. Skyward Sword's softer colors give a sense of comfort, and it does this well. Everything feels balanced in a way, and you feel like the goofball that Link is in this game. Miyamoto stated that imperfectionism is what inspired Skyward Sword's art style. He says that the 19th century art style, pioneered by French painters like Monet, is what helped fully visualize its soft, warm colors that Skyward Sword has. Regardless of Skyward Sword's wonky controls, its art style is beautiful. And then we look at the newest generation of Zelda, with The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild was one of the biggest Legend of Zelda games for quite a while. The new take on the Zelda series introduces us to so many new and insanely fun mechanics. Breath of the Wild's massive world can keep you interested and entertained for hundreds of hours, and with that we have an entirely new art style. Satoru Takizawa, the art director of Breath of the Wild, stated, I imagine that there are a lot of people who've wondered why the visuals for The Legend of Zelda change with each new entry in the series. We look for the best way to express the unique spirit of that particular game and create a world that is exciting for players to jump into and explore. Often, the results come from trial and error, and with Breath of the Wild's art style specifically, he says that they went for a painterly art style combined with the realism of the game world, with its playability. He says that Breath of the Wild's intentional contraction of reality was purposely implemented into the game, but spliced with elements of comedic value. He gave an example saying that the player is able to toss a bunch of ingredients into a pot and have a dessert pop out. We found that injecting humor into the visual shorthand helps the player forgive it the break from reality. There is definitely a lot of trial and error with the art direction. With the new take on the series and Breath of the Wild's highlight being its massive world and its fun new physics, they wanted an art style to be able to capture that, and I gotta say, for me, they did that perfectly. And finally, here we are with the Link's Awakening Remaster, which caught a lot of people by surprise. But Nintendo has this habit of giving us something that we never knew we wanted. And yet again, we see a totally new art style. The art style takes on a gorgeous and super adorable look to it that has a fun sense of adventure to it. Many people notice how faithful it is towards the original, pointing out how the world seems to be a block for block the same as the original. It also has a nice blur effect around the edges that helps give a greater sense of depth. That, along with its bright and saturated colors, make it catch the eye and look great. Its cute and charming style makes it feel like a kid's toy box dream, which I have a feeling is exactly what they wanted. The Legend of Zelda series deserves credit for how unique it is and how it can change its style and formula time and time again and still be loved all around the world. It's one of few series that will always hold a special place in my heart and for so many other people as well. Because when you're playing The Legend of Zelda, you feel like you're the one on an adventure, and in a way, you're Link, in these vast and amazing worlds to defeat evil. It's the kind of feeling that only The Legend of Zelda can create. The series is ambitious, and it always has the player in mind. The Legend of Zelda isn't afraid to try something new with every iteration, including its art style, and I think it should be appreciated because of that. Especially the CDI games. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. I know this is a bit different from my regular videos, so let me know what you think and if you want to see more of this stuff. Anyway, I'll be back to doing God of Nerf videos shortly. If you haven't, you should totally subscribe. Uh, I talk about video games a lot. Also, follow me on Twitter. I, I like the tweet. Anyway guys, I'll see you in the next one.